1 a.m. 5, serving Bay City, Saginaw, Flint, and Midland. The final day of May dawns with an explosion of sound and fury as a spring storm packing a powerful punch devours the middle of Michigan crushing, snapping, destroying whatever got in its way. When the sun rose, the cleanup began. The recovery was underway. But for some, this was it a day from which there will be no recovery. Alive. She was alive for 20 minutes. She laid there wiggling her toes and talking to me. I asked her if she's okay. She said, no, I'm dying. Good evening and welcome to this special one-hour edition of News 5 at 6. I'm Sam Merrill. Long and very difficult day for a lot of people across our region. Damage, devastation, even death. Certainly a lot to tell you about tonight. We will begin it all in the heart of Bay City, which appears to be one of the area's hardest hit by this sunrise storm. News 5's Jay Brando has been following the storm since early this morning. He joins us now live in Bay City. Jay. Sam, it was just after 6 o'clock this morning when winds in excess of 100 miles an hour ripped through Bay County, causing so much damage that the officials say it could be a full week before the county's electricity is fully restored. The full fury of Mother Nature's wake-up call wasn't fully realized until sunrise. Gale force winds pulled up trees like weeds from a garden. This morning we had about uh, 77 knots, a um, little bit more, which equals to about 100, 110 miles per hour. Any idea how long those winds stayed at that speed? Uh, it was a good two or three minutes. Trees and wires weren't the only victims in this storm. A billboard supported by twin steel I-beams slammed to the ground by the wind. I was over in that booth at the Sunoco station. What'd you see? <laughs> I just saw it, the whole sign just kind of twist and then just fall. It just came down. And I hit the floor and hoped for the best. <laughs> Bay City firefighters combed the city for people who may have been trapped inside their homes by falling trees. But one Bay City resident who spent years working on his vintage home took it all in stride. I think that in six months it'll look great. How many years, how much time you got in here? Uh, 10 years and uh, just about every day a slave to this place. And when you got up today and saw the damage? I said, everybody's okay. Fix-it crews at City Hall and Bay City have a timely job on their hands, but first they'll have to find the hands from the South Clock Tower and all the rest of the pieces before repairs can begin. And a lot of work remains before Bay County gets back to normal. The Bay County Emergency Services Director Paul Cormier joins us live with an update on the very latest of the situation, Paul. Yeah, I've uh, been all over Bay County today and we found out the damage is much more widespread than we had orig originally uh, thought. We've had uh, down power lines everywhere. Virtually every street in the county has sustained some type of damage, either from down power lines or tree branches. Uh, we have traffic lights that are out. Uh, we have uh, power lines that are still that still have power going through them on the streets and tonight it's it's going to be even worse because there won't be any lights to illuminate them to uh, show you where they are very dangerous city tonight what's the word for folks if they're going to go out this evening stay in your homes it's the safest place to be tonight uh, let the the crews attend to their business and the fewer cars in the street the faster they'll get it done okay paul cormier bay county emergency services director the biggest danger right now are the down power lines if you don't have to go out stay home but make sure you have plenty of candles and batteries because it could be a full week before Bay County gets its power back. Sam? Okay, Jay, thank you. Doesn't look like that the storm missed a whole lot on its way through Bay City. That is, by the way, just uh, as we are told, scratching the surface of really the problems around the entire Bay City area. News 5's Eric Jaila has spent the day looking at the impact on some of the businesses there, in particular some of the downtown area where some of the city's oldest businesses call home. Eric is uh, right now in downtown. How's it look? Well, a lot of broken windows, a lot of uh, brick walls that have damage, but worst of all, there's no power for those businesses. 6 a.m. and the power is going out across Bay City, with falling trees and limbs taking utility lines and transformers out in virtually every neighborhood. Also out of commission, traffic signals, making getting around town a real headache. And at Stone Cottage Florist, it was a big plant outside that ruined all the little plants inside. Well, both, both greenhouses have been destroyed. Uh, we lost all our power. Um, both, all the coolers are down. We're going to lose all our flowers. Uh, we're just, we don't know what to do from this point right now. We're just waiting. 
All around downtown, businesses were boarding up their broken windows. This twisted strip of rubber shows the blast of wind that did that damage. It came from the Delta Planetarium. Part of the outside paneling there was torn loose. By the time the storm reached Hampton Township, some of its fury had been spent. With a lot of the power out, when some of these lines become charged, we are, you know, personally, I'm not sure exactly how that might affect some of those areas. So they want to make sure that the power company knows all these circumstances. That's one of our biggest concerns. Well, one of the things being talked about, when was the last time we had a storm this big in Bay City? 1964, when a tornado came through town. Since then, we've uh, pretty much unscathed by uh, high winds until early this morning, Sam. All right, thank you. News Times Eric Jilet in Bay City. Well, in addition to all of those snap limbs, those broken windows and downed wires, there were also a number of roofs just completely blown off. In Pinconning tonight, here is News 5's Mel Cerro. It was an ill wind that blew through Pinconning, first hitting the city's welcoming sign. Folks say they heard a loud roar when it hit. But it was the sounds of chainsaws that took over as the cleanup began. At the high school, the high winds took out dugouts, and batting cages and swing sets were intertwined. But it was the 20 by 40 section of the roof of the high school that's now missing that could delay classes. It's also our cafeteria for our whole middle school, high school, so you're talking about between 1,000 and 1,100 students eat here underneath this hole right now. So we need to make some decisions and make some assessments before we can make a call on what we're going to do, but that's a, a concern of mine at this point in time. Pinconning neighborhoods were strewn with fallen trees and branches, and two people were in this mobile home watching the storm when the high winds hit. They were inside at the time. And as you just told me, where is the roof? It's someplace about 100 yards out there in the woods. There's a real disaster area out there. There's all kinds of stuff out there. The lack of electrical power is also a big problem in Pinconning. Down power lines could mean days before normal is restored. And that could mean a sewage removal problem. Our lift stations are run off electricity and we have none. We have no idea when consumer power is going to give that to us. So what could happen is we could have raw sewage come up in your basements. The one thing almost everyone in Pinconning can agree upon is that they'll remember 1998 as the year that one of the worst storms anyone can remember hit town. This is Mel Cerro, News 5, Pinconning. And we should point out that in addition to all the property damage, there is also tonight a very high human toll in Pinconning. Her name is Kathleen Black, a 30-year-old woman who was killed early today when a tree crashed right into her bedroom. She was asleep in the bed when the storm struck. Her fiancé and two kids were able to make it out safely, but Kathleen was pinned under the street. Her fiancé frantically tried to get help, but by the time police arrived, it was just too late to save her life. We couldn't find the police. We couldn't find the fire department. We couldn't find anybody. There was nobody around. It took them 45 minutes, and she was still alive. She was alive for 20 minutes. She laid there wiggling her toes and talking to me. I asked her if she's okay. She said, no, I'm dying. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> I took the girls next door, got them out of the house, and came back in there and asked her if she was okay again. And she said, no. And she said, I, I love you. <laughs>